got the closest thing that I own to paint clothes. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I usually wear these to bed. I'm going to paint the inside of the bathroom door today. So I'm super excited about that. I need to see if I have any rollers. Hopefully I haven't used them all. I have a lot of rollers. Oh, oh, this one would be good. It's like I have a lot of rollers, but not a lot of the foam. Yeah, I'm going to need to buy more. My problem is I always need to bring the roller in with me. Oh, here's more. Okay. I'm going to dump these in here. That one might be good. And then, with these. And then I bought myself a new paintbrush, so we'll bring that up too. And Go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be honest, this bathroom needs to be cleaned, but I am not wasting my energy cleaning it. I'm just gonna to get to the door. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get these rugs out because I don't trust myself. The good thing is I don't care if I get paint on the tile, but it's all coming out. Now we can stir the paint. So I can get this one. All right, when all else fails, bring it to the husband. I've already been up and down the stairs like five times. Isn't that just the way when you do a project? Do you find yourself just like to prepare and to clean up is bigger than the actual project itself? That's how I always feel. The first thing I need to do is clean the door. I'm going to bring you up close so that you can see what I'm talking about here because Oh, I also need to tape the knobs. Before we got the new fan we have now, this was a very wet room, and so can you see the mildew? So I'm going to get all of that off first. We're going to be replacing these, but I'm still going to tape them off so that they're not hard to get off. Oh, why did not I get those? I was just at the hardware store. This is going to end up coming off, so I probably will take that off now, which means going down the stairs for the 85th time. This is staying, so we'll get this all taped off. But first, Let's get it clean. I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. I have Lysol mold and mildew remover. I used to use this years ago a lot on like the bathtub and stuff. I haven't bought it in years. You know what? I'm going to open the window. Uh, I can't open the window. It's taped. Okay, never mind. Never mind. It's fine. Hopefully it won't damage the wallpaper. Ooh, I can smell it. It works though. I might need a scrubby. Yeah, I do. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna go get the screwdriver and the scrubby. This isn't moving. But sometimes I think it needs to sit. I have not used this in so many years. So I'll probably take the stain right off of it, but I don't care. Because we're painting it. I feel like if I cover it, then it's going to have... I might get gloves, too, for this part, because we need cello. So if my hands aren't dry enough. Oh, and I need a toothbrush. Okay. I got this. I got this. I remember how to do these things. Sort of. I actually came up. I forgot the toothbrush. Oh, my goodness. All right. I'm going to use a ton of this stuff. Glad I don't have smell of vision now. Oh yeah, I was gonna take this off. That's why you got a screwdriver, silly girl. This is the most mechanical you guys have ever seen. Oh 
was pretty long, but it's in wood, so it doesn't want to just come right out. I might donate this because it's a good shape. Oh, that one's going to be in trouble. Oh, I can't get it. Dang it. Hey, Robin! Help. How many DIYers does it take to take a hook off of the door? Apparently two. Or one if I hadn't even tried. It's taken the stain off more than the building. Could you hurry up? You're taking too long. You're using too much film. Yeah, that's right. It's half a video just taking that screw. What are you looking for, sweetie? The wrench. What did you do? I didn't do anything with it. What did you do with it? You said it didn't have a fat head and you put it up there. <laughs> I'm glad I'm painting it, man. Looks like it should have been done 25 years ago. Definitely put that in when I was younger. No. <laughs> Just kidding. You didn't put it in at all. Uh, no, I probably wasn't. That we were, that, this house was born with that thing. And yeah. downstairs with you. I'm going to donate it. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, baby. Thanks, baby. Yeah, this isn't coming off at all. So. I'm just gonna like get the dirt that would cause bumps in the paint, you know, this corner crap, corner stuff. Don't have any like debris or dust that I'm feeding over. That was my only concern right now. That and not getting the stuff in my eyes. That wouldn't be good either. I'm hot. Hot, hot, hot. It's not menopause though because the doctor told me, oh no, you're way past menopause. And I'm like, are you calling me old? How rude. It's like, what are these hot flashes about that? I'm not in menopause. Oh man, you shut the door. It does heat up in here. He's off because my hands are sweating. I'd rather have paint all over my hands than get hot. Stir, stir, stir. I already stirred once. So I'm going to stir again. And then, what I hate about these sinks is they're like beveled. And then this, this could be my little workbench. Take these things off. I'm using bare paint and I am using a purdy brush. My favorite paint is Sherwin Williams, but this was from back in the day before I was buying Sherwin Williams. So, when I run out of this, I will be replacing it and having Sherwin Williams match it. But, I am from the Use What You Have camp. Alright, I'm going to do this stuff first. And then, I'll use my roller for the flat stuff. Should I be sanding this? Probably. But, I feel like... I'll just do more coats if I have to. I don't want to sand it. I hate sanding. I don't have any liquid sand either. So this is what we're using. I should probably get an artist brush. I could. Maybe I'll just do the corners first and then even it out. 
you know those channels where they just quietly paint and they don't have like a million questions while they paint? I am not that channel. It's been a long time since I've painted and I've never painted one of these doors, so. It's an experiment day. Experiment day. Oh yeah, and I use no tape. Alright, I don't need it yet. Yeah, I'm just going to be more than one coat, I can see. know what you're doing when you paint, you might want to skip this video. <laughs> it might be painful for you to watch. All right, now I got to decide. I want to use this one. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's a nice size. I like that. I have a smaller one too. I wonder if the smaller one would fit on the sides. Because I have this one. These little touch up things. Nope. Too big. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna do two coats. Or three. Or eighty-five. I guess I'm gonna have to put some good music on for you, because this is gonna be a minute. This is gonna be a minute. This is gonna be a minute. La 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 la. Even though we're replacing the hinges, I'm still taping them off just so they're not super hard to remove because they have paint all over them. I don't know if this means my paint was old or if I should have sanded first. Probably that I should have sanded first. My paint is old though. We're gonna stick with it. Shadows way too long. You always thought that you were weak, but babe, you're wrong. Yeah, you better step into the light, just give it a try. Think that it's time you let that spark out. You've been hiding in the shadows way too long. Cause you're a work of art
for clicking on this video. I appreciate you. It's Jody Dunn coming at you with a new weekly video and I'm going to be working mainly in my kitchen today. When I'm working, I find it so helpful if I can listen to a video while I work, especially if that person is working too. So that's what I'm doing right now. It helps me not to just be thinking, this isn't coming out right. Why did I ever start this? Uh, my back hurts. I'm bored. It just helps me with all those little you problems. You saw that you brush. I'm also way. very messy when I paint. So I tend to get the paint everywhere. I tend to cover multiple things. So I always have paper towels handy. <laughs> And it works out that I'm in a bathroom, so I can just wet the paper towel quickly and wipe down whatever I just covered in paint. You wouldn't think it because I'm, you know, kind of localized this one area, but I have the paint can sitting on top of shelving and I have my uh, paint tray on top of other shelving. And even though I have plastic, it doesn't always work for me perfectly. <laughs> As I work with this, at first I was blaming myself. I have not painted anything in years. But as I'm working with it, and it's very sticky, I'm realizing we need new paint. So I told my husband, I'm like, I'm going to finish this because I'm half into it. I'm not, certainly not going to Sherwin-Williams right now because um, it's like 40 minutes away and it would be, I would be done for the day if I did that. So I'm going to continue with this, but I'm not doing any other rooms with this can of paint. We're going to get some new paint. In the end, it did work out looking just fine. It just was three coats worth of just fine and I don't think normally I would need to do that many coats we'll see when I get a new can of paint and it's in the eggshell for um you know the amount of gloss that it has instead of a semi-gloss I just think also egg shell covers up a lot of imperfections which this door actually under the doorknob had dog scratches the former owner had a dog that scratched like every windowsill every door i swear they were locking that dog up in every single room and i never noticed it on this door before until i painted it white but really you only see it if you get up right close but there are different imperfections in the doors so it doesn't bother me when i stand back but if i'm really up close then i can see it and there's really nothing you can do about it. In fact, you know, my husband was reminding me that sometimes, you know, you can hire a pro and it's not going to look any better. In fact, we did hire a professional painter and I'm really glad I did. I don't have any regrets. It's just if I were to hire her again, I would be covering my own furniture and my own rugs because I was cleaning up paint forever. She said she would cover everything, but then just being in a hurry and such for her own life circumstances, she didn't. And then I was wiping up paint forever. So next time I would go ahead and do it. I mean, she did a great job on the actual walls. So, you know, even when you hire a pro, you're going to notice imperfections to just about every job. Uh, I was super happy with the person that put cabinets in, but even then we had a whole issue with what was ordered and what actually fit in the space. So there's always going to be issues that come up whenever you do a DIY. It's just part of the process. You have to remember everybody goes through it. And if you're going to be looking at what you have done through a magnifying glass, you are always going to see imperfections, but other people who come in and they don't know what, you know, what happened in the process, they're not going to notice the imperfections. And even if they do, isn't that just life? There are always things and nothing comes out absolutely perfectly. So in the end, the white is a huge improvement in here. It just the brown door didn't make any sense to the way that I am decorating. I'm not doing the outside of the door because there's actually three doors in this hallway and then the hallway goes down to the living room. It would end up being an entire house project. So I'm going to do the inside of this door. I'm doing the inside of the bathroom door. 
downstairs and that's probably the only two doors I'm going to do. I'm going to leave everything else alone and the outside of both doors is going to remain brown. If I were here for maybe another five years, I definitely would revisit it. But honestly, I would love a different style door. I probably would just be buying new doors and then they would be white, factory white. I don't know. I could be wrong on that. Maybe I would get natural and just paint them myself. I don't know. So what do you like? Do you like wood stain or do you like painted? Coat one is done. That's awful, but I really do think if I just add more layers, it'll be fine. So I'm going to put the brush and the roller in Gladlock bags, put them in the refrigerator. But as far as the tray with the paint, I'm not going to try to preserve it. It's already sticky from the paint being old. I'm not going to let it sit there for an hour while I let uh, the first coat dry. So I'm just going to throw it away, tray and all. I have other trays. I was only using a liner. I wasn't using like a tray tray. So, and then I'll just pour more for the, from the can since I'm going to be getting rid of that can anyway. So, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but while I am waiting that hour, I'm going to make some more gluten-free, dairy-free cupcakes. Someone asked me if I would share the recipe, so I apologize, I didn't share the recipe in the comment section, but I'm gonna do one better by making the cupcakes today. He's just so happy. Are you so happy to be in a window? Yeah. Today I am making a gluten-free vegan cake, and I'm doing it as cupcakes because I have found that this works the best. I'm also going to be using a silicone cupcake holder because I have found that, first of all, I'm using a regular recipe. This is called a no egg chocolate cake. Some people call it wonder cake. Some people call it dump cake. Um, I have found that when you use the papers, um, the cupcake papers, the oil soaks through. Honestly, you could, I could probably back up on the oil a little bit, but I just have never wanted to mess with the recipe. So I'm using a regular recipe, and I'm using Bob's Red Mill baking flour one-to-one. -one. I also love the King Arthur flour, but my grocery store didn't have it. It might be less expensive than the Bob's Red Mill. You just want to make sure you find one that has a one-to-one -one comparison so that you can just make your recipe as normal and just using the gluten-free flour in place of your typical flour. Let me get my oil. Oh, and vanilla. This cake rises because of baking soda and vinegar. So let's get a pan. I'm also just going to stir it. You could use a hand mixer. You could use your, uh, you know, standing mixer. I'm just going to stir it. That way, if you don't have those things, you don't have to worry about it because, you know, back in ye olden days, people just stirred. My mother called this cake a chocolate wonder cake. This was the first cake that we made as kids. And in the back of our house, we had a hill that went down and we called it the banking. And if your cake didn't come out good, you would throw it down over the banking, you know? We'd just go out back and dump the cake. And I'm the youngest of three girls and I was so proud because I was the only one whose first cake didn't go down over the banking. <laughs> Which could just mean my mother helped me more, I don't know. but. I just love to remind anybody who would listen of that fact. So if my sisters are watching, they're probably laughing because they're both great cooks. And uh, But you know what? <laughs> my cake didn't go over the banking. So I'm halving this recipe. It calls for three cups of flour, and I'm using a cup and a half. I will put the ingredient list in the description box below because when I went to try to link it, you know, there's some different variations of the same cake, so I kept coming up with different, you know, vinegar um, measurements and that sort of thing. So I'd rather keep it consistent. And then it calls for two cups of sugar, so I'm going to use one cup of sugar. The reason I'm halving it is because I just know it's not all going to get eaten before it's just, I don't know, given up on. So it's better to do a half batch, then you know it's going to get eaten. 
Okay, so that was a cup of sugar, and then it calls for six tablespoons of cocoa, so of course I'll be using three. So what I'm doing is all of the dry ingredients first, and then I'll add all of the wet at the same time. And um, when, I, well, when I was a kid, the way we did it was we would make three wells in the dry ingredients. One was for the vanilla, one was for the oil, and one was for, did I say vinegar, oil, vanilla. And then you would pour the water, because it calls for more water, but it, in our recipe, it was boiling water. So when I saw this recipe for the first time, and I've had it for just a little while, <laughs> <laughs> well, when we had this, you know, when I found this one and it said lukewarm water, I was like, that can't be right. Lukewarm, it has to be boiling. So it calls for a teaspoon of salt. So, of course, I'm going to use a half teaspoon. Salt offsets the flavor of baking soda, I believe. Um, and then two teaspoons of baking soda. So I will use one. So that is all of my dry ingredients, the flour, the sugar, the cocoa, the and it's unsweetened of course, um, the baking soda, the salt, yeah, flour, cocoa, baking soda, salt, and sugar. And I'm just going to whisk it up, you know, no big deal, just whisking the dry ingredients together. Oh, you know what I think we actually used to use growing up was the ch -ch sifter. I bought one, but we used to use one of these. <laughs> Did you use that when you're growing up? Big thing with this is it can't go in the dishwasher or it'll rust. I see this one isn't really even clean though. Anyways, I'm just using a whisk. You could use a fork, you could use a spoon. You know, you're just trying to get it all blended together. Oh, it does say, this one does say indent three holes. So one, two are small and one's big because the oil of course takes up more space. Here's my three little wells. In keeping with half, and I, I can't help but wonder, this was our favorite cake. This was the cake I would always ask for for my birthday, but I can't help but wonder if maybe this was the cake my mother would choose because it had no milk, no eggs. So she knew we wouldn't be wasting a lot of ingredients. So it calls for two thirds of a cup of oil. So I'm going to use one third. I'm using canola oil. You could also use avocado oil. Even EVOO, I don't feel like it has a strong flavor. I feel like that would probably work. Two teaspoons of vanilla, so I only need to do one. Of course, I have imitation vanilla, but you could use the real thing if you want to. I'm just cheap. And then, what's the other one? Vinegar. Two tablespoons of vinegar, so I'll use one tablespoon. You can use apple cider or white, but I like to use apple cider. I feel like the flavor more reminds me of growing up. I feel like I can taste the difference a little bit. So one tablespoon of the vinegar, since I'm just doing half. And then when you get your water, which it calls for two cups of lukewarm, so I'll of course use one, you just are pouring it over the whole thing. I hear birds. Oh my goodness, what a blessing. We've heard birds all winter. Oh, so pretty. What do you think, Leo? Here's what it looks like with the in the little well. So there's my vanilla, my oil, and my vinegar, and you can see how that's bubbling up, right? So now I will just pour the water over top. And then we're just going to mix it all together and it goes in the oven. Speaking of the oven, I have preheated the oven to 350 degrees. Now I just got my handy dandy wooden spoon and I'm going to mix it all up until it's all incorporated and as less as non lumpy as possible. The smell honestly reminds me so much of childhood. Every single birthday this would be the cake that I would request and when my kids were young this was always the cake that we would make 
for them. And then once Rachel was gluten-free and dairy-free and egg-free, we decided to go ahead and try this, thank goodness, with the um, gluten-free flour. And I'm so glad we did. And I feel like now that we know about the silicone, it's a game changer. Now, one of you told me in the comments that, because I said, do you guys spray these or not? And you said, you don't spray. So I'm not going to spray this time, and we'll see how that goes. That's the one little area I am willing to um, test. I used to feel pretty confident to just, like, eat this batter, but as it turns out, you're not supposed to eat raw flour. The icing. I make a typical buttercream icing. And we use, which I don't even know if she has enough right now. Well, I think she does. We use the Earth Balance Organic. Well, I buy the organic only because it it tastes. Uh, excuse me. It costs the same as the regular. But this is a buttery spread that is also dairy free. It has vegetable oil. Um, it says in parentheses palm. Soybean, canola, and extra virgin olive oils, water, salt, defatted soy flour, natural flavor, soy lecithin, lactic acid, which hasn't seemed to bother her, um, and natto extract. Yeah, whatever that is. All right, so I'm just going to put these, this in here in each of the cups. And you could be generous with this. This doesn't rise a ton with the gluten-free flour. Not as much as it would with an, a basic flour that has gluten in it. So you can be pretty generous with these. I think last time I got um, like 10 cupcakes out of it when I did the half. Since I only have one silicone cupcake holder, then I will just wait to do the second batch till this one's out and it's cool. But um, I am going to get more because I really like baking with the silicone. Mm -mm -mm. So good. All right, I'm just wiping it with my fingers. <laughs> The raw batter does have a certain graininess to it from the um, gluten-free flour, but the actual cupcake is really good. And if you're gluten-free, I'm sure you're used to that. That's what it looks like. Then if you put the silicone uh, cupcake holder on a tray, it's just a lot easier to get in and out of the oven. The cake says 30 minutes, so I'm going to do 20 minutes and then check it. All right, let's get this cleaned up. So when I do the buttercream frosting, I also use uh, extra creamy oat milk and it makes a really nice frosting. That way it is dairy free through and through. So as I'm putting these away, I'm thinking, wait, you usually put milk in buttercream. I used the oat milk. also make um, pizza dough with this flour. I've had great results with that too. I'll have to do that another day. Actually, these were, these were a lot. This was uh, 25 minutes.
steaming hot out of the oven and they come out perfect. go up and do the next coat of paint before I fizzle but I feel like I should wait for the cupcakes to come out we'll let the cupcakes cook while I fold laundry not to mention I need a sit down job because I'm gonna be painting in a minute anyway so the next I'm hoping my husband will be involved reading the comments from today's declutter in the basement with all the laptops and everything in there. So I think I'll have a, him in the next decluttering video. See how quickly he's willing to go down there with me. We'll see what happens. So Yvonne had made these strawberry cupcakes last night. Oh. They were so good. And she made a strawberry buttercream frosting. That girl can cook. And I did have a cupcake. Ugh. I had big regrets. It was so good. And that frosting, because it was like a, it had real strawberries in the frosting. So it was like strawberry shortcake or something. I'm probably going to have to share the recipe with you, but I feel like I wouldn't be doing you a service. It's so good. So I'm trying to stay away from that icing. I'm going to ask her because this is what she'll do. Like she made to the recipe, which was way more than she needed. So now I need to say, look, are you going to use that icing for anything? Because if you're not, that stuff needs to go in the trash because she, she frosted her cupcakes. I was going to suggest maybe they buy graham crackers. Did you ever used to have um, graham crackers with frosting on it? That was a snack we had as kids. Another snack we had as kids was, this is so gross to me now, but it was bread and butter and sugar. That's gross to me now. I think my dad used to do it with crackers if we didn't have bread, but I do remember having crackers and butter, and I did think that was good, and I still think that's good. I haven't had it in years, but... When I picture the taste, I still think I would like it. I love crackers. Another thing I try not to eat, crackers. I love crackers. I love saltine crackers. I love Ritz crackers. I love crackers with cream cheese. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> oh, pray for me. My body needs like a third of the food everybody else's body needs, and I love food. So getting this all folded, doesn't it seem like I just have tons of laundry lately? I feel like I have tons of laundry lately. I don't know what's happening. Why is everyone using so many towels and face cloths? All right, I'm going to get this finished, get the cupcakes out. Then I think what I'll do is I'll paint a coat of paint, get back in my paint clothes, paint a second coat, come down make the frosting for the cupcakes. By then they should be cooled and I can get those frosted. Then we gotta figure out supper. Not exactly sure what we're having. Also, Yvonne went to the store for me, the grocery store. Her and Cresia were out, Cresia's job hunting. So she took Cresia out job hunting. I mean, Cresia could have gone alone, but it's always better to go with somebody. And even though everybody makes you apply online, Carecia likes to um, just kind of talk to them in person first, which I think is a great quality. I like that about her. So she'll do that. And then if she feels good about, you know, her interaction, she'll apply online tonight. But anyway, on their way home, they were going to stop at the grocery store for me. Originally... You know, because I could have done an online order that gets delivered, but Yvonne likes to go in the store. She loves to go. That girl, she loves to grocery shop. It's so hilarious. So um, it's a big treat 
she didn't, I don't know, she has less hours this week and at Duncan, we don't know why, but they are kind of in between managers, so maybe that's why, but she's kind of glad about it just to get a break, because she'll often work just two jobs, and she'll work seven days a week, because she works in the mall on the weekends, and then she works closer to home at Duncan during the week. All right, we're about done. We're about done. Guess I don't need to put a song on. These need to be hung up. All right, that's it. Oops, one more face cloth. Reality check is I realized that the dishwasher needed to be emptied. I definitely wanted that before supper time to be done. So here I am getting it quickly emptied. And then of course my battery died and I realized that I have two batteries. The second battery I had left upstairs in the bathroom, not plugged in. So then I had to wait until after supper to go ahead and finish the painting because I had no battery. <laughs> so this is the disaster that was coat one and it can only get better, right? Can only get better. First thing I'm going to do is put some dap in these holes. I prefer dap because I'm confident you can paint over it. I'm confident you can paint over it. Did I say confidence? Crazy. Crazy. I should probably be like, sanding this down. I don't know. Maybe I'll put another hook thing here. <laughs> it won't matter. Do I think two coats will be enough? No. Do I hope two coats will be enough? Why, yes. Yes, I do. Am I confident I'm gonna love this? No, I know I'm not. Today I was thinking about my Aunt Betty and I have shared about her before, but it's been a long time and I know there's a lot of new people, but she always inspired me because as she grew older and became elderly, she still loved working on her home. And in her later years, she lived in an apartment kind of like up on a high floor. It was a very small apartment and she still loved redoing furniture and repainting and doing all the things, but she couldn't do too much at once. So it did not bother her to pull everything out, work for 20 minutes, work for half an hour, put everything back, do it again the next day and the next day and the next day until she got whatever she wanted to get done done. Even if it was painting a wall, you know, it did not bother her. If she could only do 15 minutes, she was going to do that 15 minutes because she had a vision in her head. She was great with color. She was very much an artist. She was a crafter. She used to do craft fairs as she was younger. Uh, she just had a great eye. And I just find that so inspiring. So don't get discouraged if you watch videos and it looks like they're working all day every day and they have a bandwidth that you could never dream of because if you have a vision in your head for what you want your home to look like break it down in the most small tasks find a spot like let's say this door let's say it took you three days to do this door no big deal find a place get a box you know find a place where you could even store the stuff either in this bathroom or out in the hallway so you don't have to go up and down stairs a hundred times to get all your stuff again and just do whatever you can do each day you know storing your paint your um, paint brushes and your rollers in the refrigerator keeps them wet so that you don't have to keep buying new ones and if it's going to be a week or so in between times, you can even freeze them. I have also frozen them, wrap them in saran wrap, put them in a Gladlock bag. But even if you don't wrap them and you just throw them in a Gladlock bag and freeze them or put them in the refrigerator, they will stay wet. Uh, it's not a big deal at all. You can also get smaller cans of paint. Or you could get their like a Rubbermaid with the idea. I mean, they're plastic. They have lids. You could pour, you know, enough paint in and just put the lid on so that you're not lugging a heavy can up and down the stairs or, you know, back and forth, that sort of thing. You know, use your imagination. There's so many things that you can do so that you can still be the person who works on your house, but you don't have to kill yourself. In my case, on this day, I was super determined that I was going to get this door done in a day because I really did not want to work on it the next day. 
because I am trying to upload every day, I don't want to put this in two videos. And this is just one of the ways I told you that before that putting up a video every day means me putting the pedal to the metal on getting some of these things done. And so it is working for me right now. I'm super happy to be doing it. Uh, it's quite a dopamine shot to get that video up and accomplish that every day. So I'm not complaining at all. It's actually really helping me, but I was dog tired. Coat number three, and it's like 7.30, way past when I'm normally working, but I am not putting this in two videos. It's only going in one, so I'm gonna knock it out tonight. If it kills me! <laughs> I was super determined. Luckily with this third coat, I didn't have to do like every little corner and crevice. It was more like the broader strokes and anywhere I use the roller needed to be rolled again. And even though I wasn't confident that this paint was a good quality, it also could have been that I've been working with Sherwin-Williams paint for so long. I didn't realize what other paint was like, but I do think it's probably on the older side. It was kind of sticky, but what was confusing to me is it still dried quickly, but I did have the fan going in the bathroom, so maybe that was helping it dry quicker. I'm not sure. All I know is I didn't like the way it worked. Um, I will also say that I've heard on another channel that was doing a DIY, they said that they use Valspar, which I have also used before, and they didn't see a difference between Valspar and Sherwin-Williams. And this is what I will say about that. I was told at a Sherwin-Williams store that if you're going to buy Sherwin-Williams, get it at Sherwin-Williams. If, you, if you're buying your Sherwin-Williams paint, I can't even talk, at Lowe's, it is not going to be the same quality as Sherwin-Williams at a Sherwin-Williams store. And I believe that because I actually did buy Sherwin-Williams once at Lowe's and I was 100% unimpressed with it. So I have found it's a big difference too. And I have even found, although the paint is equal, I've been to two different Sherwin-Williams and I noticed that one Sherwin-Williams was more knowledgeable than the other. So I also have my favorite store on top of that because I know I can go in there and get advice on what types of paint to use for what types of projects. And they've been super helpful. Whereas the other one, they just seem kind of clueless. And I don't mean they were clueless, but they just didn't seem as willing to help me. Even one time, the person who waited on me in the store I liked was someone who's normally at the other store that I don't like. And he seemed to be much more helpful in that store. I don't know what it is. I don't really understand it. But even I've had custom made paint before and the numbers are right there on what to add. And then when I went to the other Sherman Williams store and they were like, oh no, we can't do that. We wouldn't be able to mix it the same, which didn't make any sense at all since I had a picture of the formula. So I just go back to my own Sherwin-Williams when I need that particular paint, which is the paint I've used throughout on my walls downstairs except for the bathroom and the dining room. It felt good to be able to do this project because my husband has been working so hard on this bathroom. It was good for me that I got to do something that felt like hard work on it too and put my own little stamp on it. And of course, I also helped painting the trim and I'll be able to help painting more trim as we go. But it did feel good. And as I was doing it, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing this again. And then once I saw the finished product, then I was like, okay, I'm definitely doing the downstairs bathroom too, because I do really like how it looks. I do think it looks a whole lot better and even a bit more modern in white than in the dark wood. Also between my second and third coat, I did make the frosting. It was very hectic in the kitchen. So I decided since it's really just buttercream and I showed you how I substituted the extra creamy oat milk in place of milk, as well as the vegan butter in place of butter. Really, if you just find a buttercream recipe and make those substitutions, it'll be perfect. Plus when I make my buttercream, I do no measuring at all. I toss the butter in, I throw in the sh confectioner's sugar, I add in the liquid a little bit at a time and I blend it up. If I have too much liquid, I add more sugar. If I have too much sugar, I add more liquid. And that's basically how I make my buttercream frosting. I'm not too worried about it. Oh, and I always do a cap full of vanilla just for flavoring and it comes out great. So you can see that the door is looking a lot better. No more of the streakiness, no more of the patchiness, no bubbling. So I was very relieved by that. I'm very happy with the way it came out. So 
I am going to show you the big reveal right about now. Nighttime, so it's dark right now, but I'm happy with it. So I'm going to let that dry, take the paint tape off, and I'll just wipe that off right there. The cupcakes came out great. I hope this video was helpful to you. Remember, as always, that God loves you, and I love you too, and I can't wait to see you next time, which hopefully will be tomorrow.